Come on, Wi-Fi. How's it going? I'm live. Apparently I'm live, but the camera's facing the wrong way. So let's try this, folks. There we go. How's it going, everyone? I see a few people have already um, turned up from California. And I'm going to try and turn this on so I can see all my chats. Coffee. It's beer time here in the States. <laughs> Gay Stealth Trees. G'day, Nick. Jovi. Uh, who else have we got? Real thing for you and Nick. Again, g'day Nick twice. How's it going Mr. Veggie Patch in Perth? G'day Larry, how are you mate? I hope the root pouches are doing well. You may have noticed I might have some up in a store for you. Um, Sean, g'day Sean. Howdy from Massachusetts. <coughs> Massachusetts. It's too early in the morning and I've only had one coffee. Jeez, now they're coming in from Italy. G'day, Indonesia, how's it going? So I'm just going to um, chat randomly for a minute or so, just so um, people turn up. Because um, I was going to get into the uh, problems we're having with the pump straight away. So Also too, apparently I have a poor connection, so very sorry if it's a little bit blurry. Um, g'day from Texas, New York, Tennessee. Um, I'm the man, I hope I am. Last time I checked I was. Um, Thank you very much, Larry, and I'm doing the same for you at the moment. Um, but we'll get into that on another clip, I think. Um, damn NBN. We're not on the NBN. We've actually got faster speed than the NBN, but we won't get into politics here. So, yeah, I might. I think we're at a minute 40 in, and we've got 60 people in, so I'll give you a bit of a look at this. I will be, um, I will be uploading this clip later uh, with a few edits added in uh, mainly because I'm just going off my mobile thanks Ruben, g'day Ruben um, mainly because I'm going off my mobile at the moment and there's a couple of um, uh, images I'd like to add in and also any questions that I missed this morning um, I might be able to add them into a future clip um, so I'm just recording it up on the laptop at the moment a bit hard to walk around with the laptop g'day from in, uh, Indiana, Perth Jamie, g'day, Switzerland, not blurry at all, thanks Brian, Thor from Brizzy, g'day, Alaska, um, where are we, quick question on pump, I'm using a pump to move the waste from my swirl filter, should I remove the filter in my pump, um, I'm using my pump to move the waste to my swirl, should I remove the filter, yes, remove the filter, unless you're cleaning it regularly, um, that would be the way to go, Sean. Um, and if I do get any questions, I'll um, try and read them out. Uh, from where are we? Brazil. G'day. Thank you, David. Pacific Northwest, Brian, West of Brian, South Coast, New South Wales. Not a problem, Sean. Well, I'm going to attempt to um, flip this camera around. Stop looking at my nose. And we'll have a look at these pumps. Here we go. Um, just before, straight off the bat, I wanted to let you guys know that in no way am I dissing these pumps. Um, these pumps are doing exactly what they were meant to do. Um, so, g'day Ch Thailand and Ohio, I think I saw. Um, in no way am I dissing these pumps at all. Um, they're doing exactly what they should do. So, both the brand Sensen I've used before and had no problems with, and also the Resun. The Resun is actually the pump we have in the system at the moment but it's a slightly different model. Um, also, too, need to do a huge shout out to Re um, on Patreon, who helped me with this. Um, I don't know if you're on here today, mate. G'day, Florida, Ben. Hi, all. Bruce. G'day. Um, so, yeah, Re helped me out a lot with this. Basically, he's in the business and knows what he's talking about. One of the things I didn't... Um, Watching I have Ipswich, g'day Davo. Um, one of the things I didn't take into account when I was ordering the pump is not only the head height from the pump down there up to the tanks up there, that's what you call your um, head height, static head height. I didn't um, include the friction head. So that's basically the friction all the hoses and the pipe work um, causes on the water flow to slow it down. So even though those pipes there are ribbed, they are um, fairly smooth, actually very smooth on the inside, but there is some friction there slowing the water down. Now, for you guys who aren't familiar with our system, we have water going to a series of barrel beds over there, bed here, so that's two, another bed here, three, another bed here, four, I'm trying to move slowly so it doesn't affect 
um, bed five. How long have they been in operation? Um, these beds, as it stands now, under a year, um, but before the barrel beds, probably two to three years. Just getting back to the water flow, I then have water splitting off there to feed the venturi that is agitating and moving the media in the biofilter. And then I have it going up to the two fish tanks. So I've got eight different points where the water is discharging to. So there is a lot of friction in all the pipe work involved there. So what we have here are two 5,000 litre an hour pumps. I think that's around about 360 something gallons US an hour. In there at the moment I have a 10,000 litre an hour pump that is doing far better than these two here. The reason for that is, comes down to the wattage. These guys here, this one here is a 220 watt, this one here is a 220, oh sorry, 200 watt and a 220. The one that's in there at the moment is a 250 and it has a little bit, a little bit more juice to it so it can pump a little bit better. So just on here if you can make it out this is the original pump that's in there g'day folks um, how long have they been in operation that's the bed I think I've already answered that um, the one in here um, yeah you have to um, come over to YouTube Re. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right too mate um, over here this is the PG 10,000 the one that's in the system at the moment I've put a little red dot there so, um, Re was saying he guesstimated, a very rough guess because he hasn't seen the system in person, that it has roughly five meters of head height when you involve all the pipework and the friction, friction within the pipework, plus the elevation to the tanks up there. And we're about to be visited by a girl with a ball. Oh no, no ball. Um, so, here we have, uh, we're pumping out at roughly, sorry guys, we're pumping out at roughly 7,500 liters an hour. Now, this is the pump here that I put in the other day. That's this one here, a brand new one. And I was hardly getting any water coming into the fish tank at all. There was virtually no movement in the biofilter. Uh, it basically has a head height of five meters. So I was just getting a trickle through um, both the fish tank and the bio. The beds were running all right because there's not a lot of resistance at um, that end there. So. The lesson I've learned is um, I should have listened to people like Paul Van who told me I was um, running a mutant octopus with too many hoses and pipes and that I should probably simplify my pipe work, actually turn it into PVC smooth bore pipe so it takes the flow a lot easier um, to where it needs to be delivered. So that's one lesson um, learned. Um, also, um, again, to re a huge shout out. Thank you very much, mate, um, for basically setting me straight on this. Um, so these two pumps here, um, even though they don't have the pressure that I need and the head height, if anyone out there around the Ipswich area would like a couple of pumps, <laughs> hit me up and I'll um, we'll see if we can sort something out. Oh, you do have a ball. Excuse me, folks. Here you go. Um, Rightio, we've got something here. Most power company sites have a page you can enter your watts and it'll give you dollars per day. Yeah, well, I already know that. Um, thanks, mate. Um, on our bill, we have a... Um, it pretty much all tells us how much um, you have a... Pay oh, yeah, and on our bill, sorry, Andrew. On our bill, it tells us how much our kilowatts hours are in cents. And I pretty much will just multiply it out from that. Also, too, we um, have uh, feed-in solar on the roof, so that pretty much well helps there. Um, it doesn't, you know, pay for all the electricity that um, is used in here, but it does subsidise our usage a little bit. So, there you go. There's there's the bit about the pumps and the bit of a stuff up stuff up I've had. Um, once I've covered a little bit more um, in um, Ryan's course. Um, the College of Aquaponics Engineering and Design. Um, I won't be sharing his content because that's just not on. Um, that's called theft, I believe. But uh, I will show you how I apply it to my system here um, so you guys can, um, you know, hopefully run a better system as well. Um, so that's something down the line. Hopefully, um, yeah, that will be happening soon, finishing that off. Hang on, I'm just reading, folks, sorry. What is the safest way for the fish uh, to elevate phosphorus for flowering stage of plants. Um, what I use is I pretty much will just use a kelp additive. I'm not too sure um, what the phosphorus is in the system, um, but I don't have any problems with flowering plants. 
Um, I was going to show you, but I might as well show you now. We've got the beans flowering. They're flowering fine. Um, I've got flowers coming on all my um, KY1, um, all Scornsby um, tomatoes. Every time I've grown a fruiting thing in the system, um, it's done fine. And all I've ever used is um, just the kelp or the seaweed additive. Um, so there you go, Nick. I hope that helps. Then again, I'm running a small system too. So um, yeah, obviously if I was running, um, when I say small system, um, it's very, very mixed what I'm growing here. The majority of it is um, leafy greens. I'm growing only one or two um, flowering plants. If I was doing this um, commercially or even had just a, a ton of tomatoes in there, I'd probably have to look into it, Nick, and find out um, a better option for uh, boosting the phosphorus. Uh, no, I'm not gonna chuck them. Um, I'll just stage them by connecting the suction port to one of them. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see what that does um, power-wise. <laughs> um, Ray, still Ray. Okay, Ray, okay. Thanks, mate. Uh, Joe, g'day, mate. How's it going? Nick, thanks, not a problem. Looking good, mate. Well, I hope that you mean the beds. Beds are looking absolutely lovely, Rob. Great work. Can't wait to get mine to that stage. Cool, Eric. Well, I hope that does well. G'day, David. So, yeah, um, as far as the pumps go, um, uh, Ray did give me a couple of ideas on cheaper brands. Um, even though he could um, sort me out with uh, some high-end stuff, he suggested, uh, not quite suitable for this, but um, he did suggest um, one brand that I will mention in a clip once I run it for a while and see how it goes. Um, it runs, the one he suggested was a 14,000. Um, liter an hour jobby and it ran to a head height of around about seven and a half meters I think he said so um, Yeah, I don't know whether I'll get that now. It also only ran on a hundred watts from memory um, so I Might give that a crack. We'll see how it goes. There's a few things. I want to alter in the system first um, I'm just going to go through this again. How's things going dude? Dude is good. Thanks, mate um Thanks for all the grain. Not a problem, Jim. Just got my small acre for it. It's ready to go. Sweet, Chad. Have fun with the build, mate. Um, uh, Arduino control power and control. That is something I haven't looked into. I've had heaps of people offer me um, assistance with setting some stuff up here for dosing, pH monitoring, and all that sort of things, David, but I haven't had a crack at it yet or looked into it. I don't have any experience with um, 12 volt, sorry, Levi. I'm looking at doing an 18 volt I think it was an 18 volt or may have been 24 um, I just had a brief look at a small system and we may be doing something with that in the future but just for now I'm just running on the 240 um, I've lost what I was gonna do what were we gonna do can you show us the siphon working I can do that there we go so yeah Today was pretty much well just on the um, the the pumps. Looking to do a solar system. A lot of people run solar. Um, none of the siphons are ready to go off. We'll wander around the other side, folks. I'll try and hold the phone steady as we go. Oh, the Kang Kong is going absolutely burko, by the way, guys. Um, just absolutely flogging it along. Did the time survive, Andrew? Well, lucky, you know, you should mention that because we're just passing it. The leaves are greening up nicely. Um, the sodium level in the system is down between one and two parts. So I'm pretty um, happy with that. Doing a proper constant flood versus drain comparison of your own. Um, I did one at the start there um, and it went all right for a little while until it went anaerobic, um, but that was pretty much all it. So yeah, can't really help you with that, Anthony. That is a good, good, good brand of pump. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm pretty happy with them all. G'day Mel, how's it going? Yeah, I know it's you, Anthony. <laughs> Who else has a hot end? Um, the Jabo controllable pumps are great moving. Yeah, I've actually got some of them and you'll probably see one underneath the grow bed down there. That's my little, um, with an empty fish feed bottle. Um, that's my um, pump I use for moving water around the system, moving it from tanks and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, it, it's a great little external internal pump. Any chili peppers to show us? Um, I have some sad ones over in a root pouch right up the back there, but none in the system. We're, we're talking about siphons, folks. So we'll just see where this one is. This one's coming up to going off. 
So, I might just hurry it along a bit. We'll just come up here. Don't do this, folks, it's not recommended. There we go. And down here. So the water's just starting to go over now. I pop that on and she'll kick off down there. These siphons, um, they're the ones that I've shown in my how-to clip. Um, they just don't fail us. They're, they're just that reliable. The only time I have had issues with them is when um, people have come around and played with the valves. I hope I didn't drop out there because I do know water plays around with Wi-Fi, even though I've got the remote unit set up. Um, so, do as I say, not as I do. Of course, Anthony, of course. Hello from New Jersey, going ground soon. Bomb was a minus four. Ooh, it's a bit chilly there. So, yeah, I hope that um, satisfied you. I think it was Stealth Trees who wanted to have a look at the siphon. We'll pop back when it breaks. Um, sorry, guys, guys, I'm a real newbie when it comes to this live streaming stuff. Uh, um, someone asked about signal is still strong. Thank you very much, mate. Um, DC pumps. Know of any good DC pumps, Adrian? Um, I've been told the Jabo ones aren't too bad, um, but then again, that's just word of mouth. So this siphon's just about to break. They do drain very quick as well, and normally they burp fast too. I've actually got two going off at the same time. That'll be it. Maybe not. Then again, someone did play around with the tap. <laughs> I think I might have too much water flowing back in. But anyway, come on, cut off. Being shown up by a lemon bell siphon. Anyway, um, yeah, there we go. We'll turn that down a bit. So yeah. Um, the Jabo 12 volt pumps, they're pretty good as far as I know, and I've been told. There we go, she just broke. Um, signal is from uh, wicking bed, flood and drain for leaf lettuce. Um, le lettuce does really, really well in hydroponic situations, which is basically what a grow bed from aquaponics is. Um, oh, thanks, Mel. Um, if you have the chance, I would recommend to do a deep water culture or NFT. Uh, I've just been told by people who have run them, again word of mouth, that they do a lot better than um, the media beds. Um, I, I have no, I can't, you know, no first-hand experience myself. Um, hopefully I'll be getting some soon. Actually, that's something for you Aussies out there. Um, over here, the foam rafts uh, have a fire retardant in them that is cancerous, or um, carcinogenic, I should say. Um, if it leaches out, they do say that it only leaches out when the foam hits 70 degrees. Um, but then again, they said formaldehyde, uh, not formaldehyde, uh, thalidomide was safe. I really don't want any foam with a fire retardant in it in my system, but I have a trough ready to do a deep water um, culture. Um, want to set up a bed just over there. Now, if anyone here has any information on the safety of using the Australian foam sheeting for deep water um, culture, I'd really, really love to um, have a link or two. Not just word of mouth. So far, all I can find is word of mouth. People saying that they have beyond organic systems, yet they still use those foam boards. I know you guys in the States are fine with it, though, because your foam doesn't have the fire retardant in it. Um, it's just a nozzy based thing, apparently. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. If anyone has information, I'd really appreciate it. Um, sorry, back to deep water, but yeah, I sort of went a bit off there. Clark, um, wicking bed, flood and drain. Yeah, I'd just go for the media bed. Um, uh, basically, they do grow faster in hydroponics. You may be newbie. Thank you. Still have a Dutch bucket. <laughs> have you used a Dutch bucket system? I have uh, about 18 plus years ago, well, a rough crude one in a hydroponic system we had under the house, Jamie, but um, yeah, nothing with the aquaponics as such. Still thanks, mate. How's the banana and root pouch? We'll get there now. Veggie pouch. Do don't worry, mate. You're okay. Serbia. Ha ha. Many gurgles. No burr. <laughs> Story of my life, mate. Um, heard the siphon fart break. Yeah, it works. Failed in the fish department. Oh, sorry to hear that, mate. D 
deep water is the way to go. You can just use pool noodles, try 9mm marine ply, wood noodles underneath. Yeah, I have thought about like a, um, a crack key style where the, the board is suspended above. Um, yeah, so um, just quickly, the banana tree. Now, no one panic, I don't have bunchy top virus. And you can hear the laptop in the background, sorry guys. Um, I have a calcium deficiency in my bananas and the leaves aren't forming correctly. So what I did was I went down to the local hardware store, bought some garden lime and popped that in. So I decided to use garden lime instead of the um, dolomite because dolomite is a mix of calcium and magnesium. And I just yeah prefer to use something that's a little bit quickly, uh, is a lot quicker to work. Um, thanks for all the good info. Oh, thanks, Ben. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, um, without trying to, um, hawk for money and that sort of thing, there's also Super Chat here on, um, YouTube. And I know people don't want to, um, don't want to have to keep donating to, um, our Patreon account. But, you know, you can throw us a buck or two over on the Super Chat. When we can use sorry. i a phone number, a phone call. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm not hawking for money, but it's there. Um, don't hate cow. Duh, duh, duh. Where are we? Don't you hate calcium deficiency in your nana? You're not wrong, Anthony. Hello, g'day, Jeff. How's it going? Um, Columbia, South America. So, yeah. Um, the rest of the system is doing absolutely fine, except for a reoccurring issue I'm having. Other than grasshoppers and having to decline Um, came out auto. Yeah, not a problem. Um, sorry guys, we're getting the mum and dad's car serviced. Grasshoppers are an issue down there. And we also have a bit of a problem with mites um, on these Chinese um, cabbage. So I'm actually thinking about just cutting my losses and pulling these guys out early. I'm having real issues with mites here and trying to control them, um, especially when it comes to, um, what's that noise? It's my ringtone, it's Pantera. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm having issues with the mites um, basically decimating a lot of different bits and pieces. So I know I'm doing a live stream, sweetie. Can you tell them I'll ring them back, please? <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm going to upload this differently after I edit it. Um, yeah, so having a few issues with the mites and um, the grasshoppers, but that's pretty much well it. Everything else is going bananas. Um, the kangkong's actually flowering, and hopefully we'll get a couple of seed pods because I have asked people for them. Sounds like a dialect. Yes, that's the one. That's the song respect. Um, yeah, Malabar spinach and it's it's going great guns we've been harvesting a few leaves off that so um soul flies my ringtone by the way <laughs> sounds like an alarm going off scares people in the shops the beans going great guns the uh, mushroom herbs coming back um the celtus has taken off down here as well as the red amaranth neem oil i don't use neem oil in the system um i know they do say it is safe but i prefer not to and you'll never guess what just landed on my finger a little baby, um, with the final focus, praying mantis. Thanks for coming along, buddy. We might go and put you down in here, I think. There you go. Good boy. Um, Nemo, no, I don't use it in the system. Um, I have used it in the garden before. I have been told that it is safe for aquaponics. Um, I've also heard of people um, who have lost fish after they use neem oil, but they could have used a version of neem oil with other additives, um, so who knows? I just don't want to risk it for my own plants and my own fish. That's a bugger, Ben. I had to take the broccoli out of my system because they were all raising hordes of white fly. Yeah, white fly killed my citrus. Minus a kaffir, great rig tone, um, Dalek even. Um, yeah, so the only pesticide I've been using in here is BT, uh, which is Bacillus thuringiensis. Um, is a um, bacterial formulation that will attack the cabbage butterfly. I've also noticed it does work on the uh, magpie moth that eat the poor rock and ound spinach over there, but it doesn't do anything at all for the grasshoppers. It's the wrong strain of BT. Um, so unfortunately the grasshoppers we just need to live with. Um, the same with the mites because I don't really want to use white oil in there. 
You're you're a very patient dog. How about I reward you? There you go. <laughs> so um, yeah, as far as aphids go, I just hit them with the garden hose to tell you the truth, or um, the little spray bottle uh, as far as I can. Sounds like your sinuses have improved um, a little bit. Thank you very much, sir. I don't know if I should out you and who you are there, Mr. Um, Sitting Elf, but thank you very much. Uh, what about diatomation earth for hoppers? Um, we have so many um, coming through, like our place here, we would be giving the grasshoppers a good feed, but they'd also be moving through our place um, and coming in from elsewhere. So I can treat all the grasshoppers here. When we first moved in, I was using pyrethrum and it, um, yeah, knocked off the grasshoppers. Within a day though, we had more grasshoppers coming through. So by the way, pyrethrum I found only worked on the young ones, not the large mature um, grasshoppers. And you never use pyrethrum with aquaponics. Huge disclaimer, do not use pyrethrum with aquaponics. Um, yes, we use DE here in the States. Have you um, spray every couple of days? Yeah. G'day Frank, I knew it was you Frank, I just didn't know whether you wanted to be outed or not. Um, the DE I've used on um, aphids and these tend to work well with the green aphids, but in the past we've had um, a lot of black aphids with our oniony family plants in the aquaponics and for whatever reason the DE didn't really work too well with them. Um, so I pretty much all gave up using it in the system. I actually know, um, I read on a forum ages ago, there's a guy that was using DE to add nutrients, um, elements into the system, probably namely silica, I think it is. Um, so, g'day Mr. Greg, how's it going mate? Um, Greg's, Greg's Kitchen, you folks out there, if you like a little bit of, um, bachelor cooking, um, hope you well, I don't know if he's a bachelor or not, but it's the sort of food I used to eat when I was renting. Uh, check out Greg's kitchen channel, the top bloke. Um, use gravity, how many water enter the grow... Uh, if you use gravity, how many water enter in grow beds, thanks. Um, I think you mean how many litres. Um, basically, what you're wanting to do um, with your grow beds, they're a biofilter. So what you want to do is turn over the volume of your fish tank through your biofilter, which is your grow bed, a minimum of one time per hour. Um, I prefer, preferably I'd say 1.5 times an hour, um, and that will give the bacteria that set up shop on the media in there enough time to process the ammonia and the nitrite. That's just a very basic rule of thumb. I do know people who um, have their tank swap over three to four times an hour in the backyard system, and that's just to make, you know, the water come through here, get enough chance to be um, processed from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. So um, yeah, I hope that's answered your question. Um, I know if you use gravity, how many what? Yeah, it's it's pretty much all the same whether you use gravity or if it's like our system and it's pumped through. In fact, with our system, because it is a split flow, we have the water coming up the pump and then splitting out to the grow beds and up to the fish tank as well. Um, we actually need the water to pass through the grow beds uh, a little bit more frequently just to make sure that it has been processed correctly. Um, Mr. Greg again. Oh no, it's the same one. G'day Mr. Greg again. Uh, freaky giggy, g'day. Uh, thanks Alan. 357 to go. Looking forward to reaching the big 10, uh, 100,000. Thank you very much, Frank. You're an absolute legend, sir. Um, I'm hoping I get there soon. I know it's just a number, but it is, you know, nice to think that 100,000 people have bookmarked one of my videos to come back to in three months' time. <laughs> um, good on you, Rob. Your garden's awesome. Thank you very much. Makes The makers of EK Neem and Eco Oil say don't use EK Neem in aquaponics. No disclaimer for oil, though. Um... Yeah, I, that's that's what I, yeah, Ruben, um, I just wouldn't risk it myself. I just don't see the point. Um, primarily, you can, you know, if something goes wrong with your system and your plants die, you know, even though their um, ideas that they may have feelings, um, they're a lot easier to plan out and your fish do suffer um, if you poison them. They're a living animal, so I'd prefer to look after the fish and, um, yeah, I can always buy more plants if the aphids or grasshoppers or whatever decimate my system. Not a problem at all, Mr. Greg. We watch your clips all the time. Um, all of us. Um, ever, ever try Cape Grisby's? No, I haven't. Um, we grow them. They pop up wildly, sporadically in our jungle down the back there. Um, is your sump buried? Yeah, it's cut off at 600 litres, and I think there's roughly around about 8 inches um, down the bottom there. So, um, sorry, I've just had a Facebook pop. 
Um, yeah, there's about 8 inches or 20 centimetres buried down there, I think, from memory. So it's not technically buried. Um, but yeah, I used to have an IBC sitting here, if you've watched some of our earlier clips. Um, an IBC setting there, and it was all gravity fed. So I wanted that down a little bit lower. Um, oh, that was you, Andrew. Yes. Um, Victor, I think re remove a warehouse, do foam sheets for packing. I have to... Ah, cool. Thank you, Victor. Graham, what's a good ratio of grow beds to fish tank? If you have a thousand litre fish tank, how many litres of grow bed should I have? Mate, I have seen so many people, Graham, with um, different opinions on that. Um, I look at it this way. Um, as I said before, you want your water to be processed through a minimum of 1.5 times an hour through your biofilter. So if you have three grow beds for a thousand litres, that technically means, you know, um, they each get probably um, probably 150 litres in each um, with media and whatnot of actual water. So they only need to cycle through one or two times an hour um, for the water to be processed. So it's, it's, it is one of those things. It depends on how, ma how much protein is in the feed, how much feed is going in the system, how many fish you have. Um, but I think if you've just got a 1,000 litre um, system, uh, a good standard is a three 300 litre grow beds. I hope you're an Aussie. Um, three 300 litre grow beds, and that'll pretty much will see you right as long as you're moving the water through the grow beds from the fish tank at least one and a half times an hour. Um, life goals. <laughs> Some milestones are huge. Yes, they are. Um, have you ever thought about trying to grow maybe the world's largest turnip or something? No, I haven't. Um, Dan over in Allotment Diaries in the UK, he grows some fantastic um, show veg, some large ones. So definitely check out Dan's channel. It's called Allotment Diaries. And he has some very, very nice um, large carrots. He also does phenomenal with the potatoes in containers as well. More economically viable to use aquaponic system rather than just regular beds. What's the biggest benefit? Um, well, for me at the moment, I don't have to bend over because my back is absolutely throbbing at the moment. Um, it's nice and high. Weeds, virtually no weeds. I, I do think if I look hard enough, I could probably find some. Um, there's some parsley up there that could be technically called weeds. But... Um, Definitely uh, the growth rate as well as long as you've got your feed ratios up and the right nutrients and everything um, you, You're definitely going to um, have accelerated growth in here compared with most soil systems um, Economically viable well that comes down to your um, electricity bill or whether you've got solar um, How fast you go through pumps um, if you use clay media, if you use rock, rock is a lot cheaper than the clay So there's all different factors and it's, it's pretty hard to say because for us here will be different, you know, for even people in New South Wales or Victoria down south. So I hope that helps, mate. Um, oh, nutrient-wise, I suppose I um, should cover this. I am um, only a novice when it comes to biology of plants. Nutrient-wise, there are things you do need to add into an aquaponic system um, to make them nutrient-dense. With soil beds, you still need to do the same things. Um, once a plant uses an element and it's no longer there, it needs to be replenished. Luckily, most um, soils around the world have adequate nutrients. Um, all you need to do is give them a top dress with a, a good quality compost or worm casting or something like that, and that will bring the nutrient level back up. Um, definitely a lot cheaper to buy to make your own compost than to um, buy your own fish um, to buy fish food and that sort of thing. I suppose you could go on for hours on that subject, um, Muhammad, and, and cover it all. Reuben, fair enough. I hope it's fair enough. I'm not too sure. Um, I'm going slowly through the chat, guys. Explains the yellowing of the plants. Bloody Pantera, you're hurting their feelings. Uh, the, the yellowing, I think, is a, um, a, a slight cross between the, the residue of damage done from the assaulting the system and also, too, cutting back on the feed rates for a little while. I did notice the nitrates had dipped down to zero, so I'm having to um, beef up the, the amount of feed I'm putting in the system. Have you tried homemade of fungicides, comments, waste of time or not? Um, soap, pure liquid soap mixed with water, one teaspoon per litre. Um, and I've used that on aphids and it works really, really well. Not something I've used a great deal with the aquaponics though, because I don't want to come out here and have a bubble bath in the sump tank. Um, not a problem, Graham. Glad I could. 25 mil standpipe, bell cycle a bed in about 20 minutes. Um, depends on your flow rate in, but yeah, that sounds pretty... Um, 
cycle in 20 minutes. Yeah, that sounds pretty reasonable. That's in and out. Uh, Bonnie, oh, you, you went blank, Bonnie. I can't read anything. Sorry about that. Um, I've actually got 20 mil standpipes on ours, just quickly. Yay, I'm Ozzy from the Riverland South Oz. G'day to the um, uh, mums from down that area. I was going to say crow eater, but I think that's an insult to some people. Can you put sea salt in the fish tank on a regular basis? I will be putting in about 20 goldfish in the tank. A lot of people use sea salt, Jamie. Um, they use it for some of the trace elements. I have seen people say you can cycle a system with sea salt. Don't listen to them. Um, there's virtually no nitrogen um, or ammonia in the sea salt to help build up your, your colony in there. You're better off adding in the amount of food that you want to start off your first batch of fish in um, on a daily basis and as it breaks down it will release ammonia and get the bacteria set up. Um, you can also um, add in your own urine if you're game enough and not on any meds. Um, just a little bit at a time and monitor your nitrates and ammonia and everything um, and you can cycle a system that way. Lack of weeding, a big number one. Good evening from North Carolina. Thank you for not a problem. Um, David, it's all down to external contaminants per billion with your plants intake system. Yes. Are there worms in the bed? There are worms in the bed and I keep meaning to do a clip on it because it's one of the most common um, questions I get. Um, I get asked all the time, why don't you just put red wrigglers in your bed and they'll look after all the fish solids. That's, that's a bit of a furphy, guys. Um, don't listen to folks who say that's the only solid filtration you need. You need a little bit more than that, depending on your stocking density. Lack of weeding, I spent six hours digging out asparagus. I <laughs> don't envy you. 13 golden nutrients. Asparagus ferns, ah, yeah. Uh, check out Bright Agritech feed. Yeah, Bright Agritech. Um, yeah, there's loads of different feeds in America. I've also seen that there's now organic ones available. I don't know people who are um, selling them though. I'm just going through here. Wow, I'm a little bit behind. Crow eater, damn banana vendors. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, yeah, well, I'm actually a Welshman, to tell you the truth, South Welshman. Um, I'm just a visitor. Have been for the last 20 or something years. Um, how do you plan on using Comfrey? They're completely taking over allotment in search of different uses. Um, compost, compost, compost. Um, they can be a real pain in the uh, butt to try and remove as well if you overplant them. They can totally take over Comfrey. Um, more people need to be aware of that, that they can actually become a weed. Very hard to smother and dig out. What sort of test kits have I used? I've used the API freshwater test kit. I've just looked at the time, guys, and my battery. I need to wind this up. Um, API freshwater test kit is the only one I've pretty much all used except for my HANA pH test pen and I have to give these guys a plug because this Blue Lab combo meter um, has been absolutely awesome. Um, I've gone through one probe since I had it and I think that's because um, there was a time there where I was actually laid up for about two weeks. I couldn't um, come out the back, the girls had to help me and I left this in the water. I told them just to leave it in there and check the pH and I think that may have damaged the pen. Um, another message from Facebook, so we'll ignore you for a moment. Sorry, Peter. Um, yeah, the Blue Lab combo meter, um, great for your pH um, and also your temperature, does Fahrenheit and Celsius. Um, I don't really use the, the nutrient measurement, um, ba basically because it, it's a little bit harder to read in aquaponics. Trout for the cooler months, um, great if you're down south up here, you end up with fish emulsion. Um, we don't quite get it cold enough, long enough, Tyler. I suppose we could do a chilli system, like run it through a fridge or a freezer. Crow eater, <laughs> um, peaponics for the win. Uh, comfrey mulch, compost starter, comfrey tea, yep. No pooponics. <laughs> Good one, Anthony. Hello from rainy San Diego. G'day. Hope it clears up for you soon. What plant is hanging down right of the grow bed? I take it you mean this one here, because this is where I was standing. That is rosemary. I started that off from a cutting because I was slowly smothering the other plant in the bed. I'll take you for a bit of a walk around. So that's my lime tree, and we've got some chop and drop um, Queensland arrowroot there, or Canaregulus. A bay tree and over here we had a huge pigeon pea um, this is um, or split pea it was three three or so meters tall and it was just shading out everything down here and it totally smothered my huge rosemary bush so a while back I took a cutting in case this one didn't bounce back and that's what it's 
you know, that's the plant that started it off in the system. And same there with the lavender. Um, when I found it again the other day, I thought I'd actually killed it. I popped a couple of cuttings into the um, system. And if I haven't lost you all there with the connection, I'll show them to you now. Just down in there, we've got um, one of the cuttings. And the other one, you can take my word for it, the other one's over the back there and it's doing well. Um, yeah, so rosemary. Good filtration, good, in good results. You're not wrong, David. Something um, it took me ages to work out. Amp, g'day Amp, how's it going, mate? Um, lived in... Kerrigree for many years. Do you have Jerusalem artichokes? No, we did have them. Um, they weren't a big hit here with the girls, so we pretty much will never grow them again. And they came back anyway. Um, but we did give loads away um, to members of our seed sharing group and love the locals. Um, edible abundance. Wahoo! <laughs> David, I'm talking all my reliability, nature of balance, inspiration from you. Thank you very much, David. Well done, you've almost sound like an auctioneer trying to keep up with the comments. Well, you'd know, wouldn't you? Um, can you eat the Queensland arrow root? Can a regulus? Yes, you can. Um, the bowl. So, Triple B, thanks. I actually got it coming back up again. So, if you're watching this, I'm actually going to flick the camera around. There we go. I don't know if any of you guys are still hanging around. Um, give me a shout out if you are. That's good to know, Brian. I hope it works out well for you. I'm here. Yay, Frank's still here. So I'll just give you a bit of a uh, quick look again. Well, 12 people. Yeah, we've got a few people back on. Sorry, guys. Um, oi, oi. Uh, the, I was talking about the, um, the Queensland arrowroot or canaredulus. Um, sorry if you've dropped out of the chat, but basically you can cook up the um, corms. Um, they come out anywhere like tennis ball size and above. Um, around that size is pretty good, we've found. Um, they make a nice starchy filler for stews and stuff like that. Again, love your show. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for coming along, mate. Um, so I suppose I should probably pretty much well wrap it up unless someone has a quick question for me. You can see me now. Thanks, Garth. Um, if anyone has a quick question for me, I'll pretty much will get to that and then I should wrap it up because we've gone on a little bit longer than the uh, 30 minutes I was planning and the mechanic needs me to call him back. <laughs> no, no one there. Not a problem. Um, so what I'll do, guys, is I'll, um, I will be editing this clip um, so it may not be uploaded straight away to YouTube um, so you can suss that out. What are the white grape-like sacks on the roots of asparagus fern? I don't know, mate. I have no idea. Asparagus fern definitely is not one of my um, my favourite weeds to have. Uh, probably some sort of a nutrient nodule or store. I definitely don't. I don't think they're nitrogen fixers, so I don't think it's that. Uh, from memory, um, yeah, um, yeah, no, they're not. It's just starting to sprinkle here too. So, woohoo, rain. So anyway, I will wrap it up, guys. Um, oh, there's more people coming back. Maybe I should hang on. Should I hang on? I don't know. How about we throw some feed in for the fish? We'll have a look at that and then I'll sign off. So I'm just going to put the phone down so you can have a look at the um, top of the radial flow filter. Enjoy, I hope so. I hope I have a great day, David. Um, just throw this in. We'll see if they come up for a feed. Might be a little bit too early for them. No, you watch, I'll walk away and they'll start to feed. Normally they um, send some nice splashes out of the system. Yeah, they're starting to hit it, but only a few. Dad was standing here the other day and got saturated. Um, just a quick question. Uh, what veggies to start, but not better question. Yeah, it depends on where you are. Good life down under, I'd say you're in Oz. Depends on what part of Oz. Um, at the moment, I'm just growing my tomatoes, um, our fruiting plants to keep them away from the fruit fly. 
they're feeding right up the back there I don't know if you guys can see them um, but yeah um, greens we grow greens all through winter as well um, I've got a couple of capsicums I'm trying to bring back uh, another um, good site to look at is Gardenate or the Gardening Australia website and they've both got some great um, gardening apps um, I'll put the links in the description of the clip once I finally post it and edit this one down and you can suss that out a Mangus Walker TED Talks now you're going viral <laughs> cool thank you David um, it would be nice if you gave zones for the plants as UK has problems with some of yours yes um, yeah I'm in um, 9b I'm actually am I 9b or was I 10 I forget I'm pretty warm anyway um, but garden 8 um, uh, triple B if you go to garden 8 they have UK uh, planning information as well that's why I like it and I recommend it because I've got viewers um, from um, you know North and South America Asia um, Africa Middle East um, Europe unfortunately they don't do a lot of Africa and they don't do the Middle East um, but they do do North South America um, South Africa UK and Australia and New Zealand I think they do New Zealand Geez, getting a bit boisterous folks so um, yeah web address um, gar if you just look up gardenate g-a-a sorry g-a-r-d-e-n-a-t-e dot com um, suss that out I'll also put a link under this clip once I upload it had to buy new pumps for my aquaponics today just starting things for the summer time in Wisconsin nice one Mike um, I've actually I've got a bit of a clip that I will be uploading um, soon I've already shot it I just need to edit it down it's on our playlist and um, how you can use our playlist to find different um, videos that may help you out including the um, aquaponic ones so mm -hmm. hopefully I'll have that sorted out soon um, Dave Lyons is commenting on my patreon member only Facebook group well that's nice David you should be here um, <laughs> Had to buy new palms, by the way. Have you eaten koi carp? No, I haven't, but I have been told that it is doable. I think Citizen Peng, um, a gentleman down west of Sydney who has an aquaponics channel here called Citizen Peng, um, he raises it for the Chinese restaurant market. Um, I don't know if it's the gold golden carp or the koi carp he's using, but yeah, it is eaten apparently. So, a few too many bones, so I've been told. Well, it looks like I've just hit the 54 minute mark. Um, uh, Peng's site, yeah, Peng is a bit of a legend. He's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there, folks. And I'll um, go and suss out what's going on with Mum and Dad's car. Then I'll edit all this down. And hopefully you guys will see it in three or four hours, knowing our upload speeds here in Australia. So I do hope you've had a fantastic little catch up with me. Um, the next one we do, we'll do keep losing you yeah i know i'm a bit evasive thanks very informative not a problem graham um i do hope that this little um you know session has helped some of you folks out especially with um pump problems and i will catch you all online and i do have another root pouch clip coming up during the week for you folks interested in root pouches take it easy folks and have a great one catch ya